Again, Erev Shabbos, Parshas Vayechi. We're heading up to a uh, Chazak Chazak over here. I heard a Moira de Gevort, uh, Rav Tzodok, Koyen, tells us. Uh, based on Chazal, say that uh, Yosef Atzadeh comes to visit Yaakov in this week's Parsha. Tati, anything I could do for you? And he says, yeah, I want to give you a bracha, I want to give your kids a bracha. He gives all the brothers brachas. It's amazing, these brachas. Some of them literally have the have the word klala in them, you know? You have to know what, what's... What, what's What's a true bracha? What's a true bracha? Do we know what's good for us? Do we know? But Chazal point out that Yosef did not visit Yaakov until this point. Yaakov had been there for months. For years. And Yosef did not visit him once. He saw him when he walked in. When Yosef hugged Yaakov and Yaakov said Shema. And then Parshas Vayechi. Didn't visit him in between. And Chazal explained that Yosef was being sensitive to the brothers. Why? Because if he were to hang around with Tati Yaakov, at some point, at some point in conversation, it would have come up, by the way, where'd you go? I thought I thought you got eaten by a wild animal. Taraf, Taraf Yosef. And then Yosef would be in the very, very uncomfortable position of letting Yaakov know that he was sold, thrown in a pit. And uh, attempted murder by by the other eleven shvatim, the other ten shvatim, before Binyamin. To avoid that awkward situation, Yosef never even showed up at his father's house until Mamish Vayechi. Which, ironically, Vayechi is Yaakov's death because we know that Yaakov vino leimes Vayechi Yaakov. And if Tzadik adds on to this part, he says not only was ya- was Yosef being sensitive to his brothers. He was giving up a fantastic opportunity. He says the reason why Yaakov didn't hug Yosef back was not just because of the Shema that he was saying. He could have said Shema and also hugged him. It was because Yaakov was concerned about Yosef. You know, Yosef was good looking. And he was in Mitzrayim, Ervasa Aretz, which was not a very good place for Yiddish boy to be. And Yaakov was concerned that maybe there was something tome, tome in Yosef and his years spent in Mitzrayim. That was a long time away from home. And Yosef could have just, just wanted, he could have just told him that I said no to everything. I married Osnas, I married Dino's daughter. But he didn't. He never even got a chance for redemption to vindicate the assumptions that Yaakov had about him. Because maybe he'll have to give up the brothers. The brothers that threw him in a pit and sold him to Mitzrayim. He wasn't going to let that happen. It's the little things that we do quietly to ourselves. The brothers never knew about this. He very much could have gone and spoken to his father. It was his right. He was viceroy of Mitzrayim. But he didn't. There was a Yid who lived in Eretz Yisrael, and as we know, Eretz Yisrael has everything in the entire world in it, but financially, and I, there's also a financial component to living anywhere, and economically, at Bar Hashem, it's amazing compared to what it used to be, but for Avrechim, we're sitting and learning, money is something which doesn't come easily, and this Avrech um, wanted to join a Kailo up his, down his block, and they paid 500 shekel um, for that seder, but they were full and they didn't accept him. So he wasn't able to be on their payroll. Whatever, they ran out of funds. There's only a certain amount that the, the sponsor gave. But this yet said, look, I'm not, I, I, I'm here to learn terror. I'm here to serve the Rabbi Nishalaylam. And he sat in that base medrash and learned without getting paid. Mamash Lishma. And he said, thank you, Hashem. Now I get the chance to learn. Not just learn, and now, I, now it's totally for you. I'm not doing it for, I'm not getting paid. This is, this terror is purely for you, Rabbi Shlomo. Then one day, one day, one day, someone comes in, makes a clap of the bima, and says, anybody who's here, um, from beginning of Seder to the end, uh, you sign up now, and you can get 500 shekel. This, uh, this week, whatever it was, there was a Hanukkah uh, bonus. Just come and sign up. 
The only problem was that he had made a Kabbalah. He had made a Kabbalah recently that he was not going to leave Seder for anything. No phone calls, no coffee breaks. He says, I'm here to learn and I'm going to learn solid. And that means not getting up and signing up. He said, I could sign up after Seder, but I can't sign up in the middle of Seder. But this was, this was the 500 shackle that, that he he deserved. He was sitting here and learning here anyways. But he made a Kabbalah. That's it. It's one of the nice things about a Kabbalah. It's unbreakable. It makes it easy on the Bechira. I have no choice. This is, this is, I, it's not on the table. So he didn't sign up. And he comes over after Seder to sign up. Maybe there's a spot left. No, I'm sorry. All the slots are full. I'm sorry. End of story. That's it. This he had walked out knowing that he values his hasmada, his retufas and learning more than a 500 shekel paycheck, which means the world to him. Torah means worlds and worlds to him. His connection to the Baruch Shalom, his Kabbalahs, that means the most. That's what he walked away with. End of story. It happens to be a week later that the Deershaw organization called him up and told him that he won the $5,000 reward raffle thingy. But that's a totally different story. This story is about how he was most nefesh and got nothing for it. Okay? Because it's the quiet things that we do by ourselves. I don't know. Every story doesn't have to end up with, with it. And, and then he found a million dollars. It doesn't have to. Sometimes you're just most nefesh and that's the entire story. You're just a good person for doing a good thing without getting any instant rewards. Okay? Have an amazing shopping. Hey, I'm a Kaddish, and the Kaddish is a very cool song. You stay over here, son. Go. I'm a Kaddish, and the Kaddish is a very cool song. You stay over here, son. Go. Cool song. You stay over here, son. Go. Good Shabbos.